Magandang gabi po sa bawat isa. We are on the fourth day of our LYR Holy Week series. We're in tinitingnan natin, inaaral natin, no, nire-realize natin kung ano yung mga pinagdaanan ni Christ uh, sa cross. No, so, uh, ngayong gabi, ay, papalapit na tayo ng papalapit sa Calvary no, na kung saan siya ipapako sa cross. Pero ngayong gabi, meron tayong dadaanan na isang mahalagang, a very significant Uh, things na naranasan ni Christ. No, at dahil as, as, as Christ believers, as people who put their faith in Christ, it is significant in our lives as well. Pero bago po yan, manalangin po tayo. Panginoon, kami ay patuloy na nagpapakumbaba. Lumalapit sa inyo, Panginoon. Humihingi ng guidance. We pray that you will guide our hearts We pray that you will allow us to understand the meaning of your cross, of your suffering, so God. Father, we pray that you will also guard our hearts as we study your word. Panginoon, salamat sa lahat ng ginawa mo para sa amin upang kami ay maligtas. Even to the point that you experience injustice. Thank you for this night, O God. Pinatas namin ang pag-aaral na ito sa iyo. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. So our topic for tonight is Jesus before Pilate. Kung isasummarize ko po yung topic natin ngayong gabi sa isang word, kung isasummarize ko yung mapag-aaralan natin ngayong gabi, yung mga uh, bagay na titingnan natin ngayong gabi sa isang tema, that would be Injustice. No, injustice na na-experience or naranasan ni Christ noong 2,000 years ago. But before that, ano ba yung injustice? Nabigyan ko kayo ng simpleng uh, example. For example po, ang magulang natin merong mamahalin na vase na paborito niya o gustong gusto niya at ginastusan talaga. Kaya nga mamahalin. Eh. Tapos, nabasag to. Nabasag yung vase at ikaw yung napagbintangan. No, kumbaga, during that time, siguro ikaw lang yung nandun sa bahay. So, ikaw yung pinakamalapit sa vase. So, ikaw yung napagbintangan. Tapos, ikaw yung naparusahan. Yun, alam mo, deep in your heart na inosente ka. Hindi mo siya nabasag. Maybe may ibang taong na pumasok tapos nasagi yun. Pero in the, hindi ikaw eh. Hindi ikaw yung nakabasag, pero dahil ikaw yung napagbintangan, no, ikaw yung naparusahan. So maybe pinaglalaban mo pa yung sarili mo kasi, yun nga eh, hindi mo, ano eh, inusente ka eh. So inilalaban mo sa sarili mo, yung sarili mo, sabi mo hindi mo siya ginawa. Pero in the end, they were convinced na ikaw yun. That is a picture of injustice. And that is a picture of what Christ experienced. No, hindi inusente siya, pero siya yung naparusahan. No, nandito na po tayo yung sa sa punto na yung mga high priest or yung mga guards ay dinala si Christ kay Pilate, kay Pontius Pilate, a governor. Sa sa atin madalas uh, familiar na tayo kay Pontius Pilate. Pero ngayon, medyo aaralin pa natin siya ng mas malalim. So, in verse, nasa chapter 27 na rin tayo ng Matthew. So, uh, tapos na yung pag, pa, 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 pagpapakamatay ni, ni Judas sa verses 2 to 10 yata yun. So, sa verse 11 na tayo. Now, Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, It is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he answered him not one word. So that the governor marveled greatly. So sabi doon, he marveled. Si Pilate, no? si Pontius Pilate, namangha siya sa ginawa ni Christ or kay Kristo. Bakit kaya? No, kasi ang isang guilty na tao, for example, a guilty person, guilty of crime. No, pagpalagay na natin na guilty sa 
uh, sa pagpatay ng tao. Ang gagawin niya, nahanap pa yan ng lawyer para i-defend siya sa korte. Alam niya sa sarili niya, guilty siya. Pero hahanap pa yan ng magaling na lawyer para i-defend siya sa korte. Bakit? Para mapababa yung sentensya. O kung hindi man, eh, kung makakalusot man, eh, mapawalang sala. No, hindi makahanap ng sapat na ebidensya na siya yung gumawa ng krimen, mapawalang sala, makalusot. But, but Jesus was different. He is innocent. Wala siyang nagawang kasalanan. At may, isang punto po pala. Sa korte, kapag ang isang tao nililitis, nililitis lang siya sa isang krimen na inireklamo sa kanya. For example, siya ay nakagawa ng murder. Hindi nakahalungkatin yung buong buhay niya, yung mga times na siya ay nagsinungaling, yung mga times na siya ay na nakasakit ng kapwa, para maging ebidensya na siya ay, na hindi, na yung, hindi na yung lilitisin, hindi na yung titingnan. Ang titingnan lang is yung ginawa niyang murder. No? Hindi naman siya, uh, hindi naman siya ay pupunta sa prison dahil sasabihin sa kanya, nung bata ka, ikaw ay nakagawa ng, nagsinungaling ka sa magulang mo. No, for the reason lang na siya ay nakagawa ng murder. Na bakit ko po ito nakwento? Because Jesus is innocent, ang, ang, ang inako sa, inaako sa, sa kanya ay blasphemy. Pero hindi lang siya inosente sa blasphemy. He is innocent of any sin. Simula pagkabata, hindi siya nakagawa ng kasalanan. Simula pagkabata, hindi siya nakasala, nagawa, nakagawa ng kasalanan. So kung titingnan natin buong buhay ni Jesus, kung lilitisin natin buong buhay ni Jesus, Same result, hindi makakahanap si Pilate ng enough evidence na siya ay guilty. So grabe po yung naranasan ni Christ. No? He was innocent but he remained silent. Now, dumako na po tayo sa susunod. But, ba- bago pala yon. in Luke's account, hindi na natin babasahin. No? Pero sa, sa Gospel of Luke, naikwento rin doon that uh, Pilate, uh, nakita nga niya ni, ni Pilate na inosente si Christ, si Christ So, ipinadala niya to, pinadala niya si Kristo kay Herod. So, si Herod, na uh, another political leader, no? Uh, well, ganun din, same result. Hindi nagsalita si Christ, hindi niya dinefend yung sarili niya. Ang ginawa niya, ang ginawa ni Herod, pinahirapan siya. Pero, wala siyang nakitang enough na reason para siya ay mapatawan ng kamatayan. So, dito na tayo sa next na, uh, na, na topic. No, yung conversation between Jesus and uh, and Pilate. In John chapter 18 verse start tayo sa 33. Sabi doon, then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, "Are you the king of the Jews?" Jesus answered him, "Are you speaking for yourself about this or did others tell you this concerning me?" Pilate answered, "Am I a Jew?" Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. See, sabi doon, I find no fault in him at all. No? After niya questionin si Jesus, after niya siya magtanong, nakita niya, wala namang kasalanan tong taong to. He is an innocent man. At, at as a governor, alam niya kung inosente ang isang tao o nagsisinungaling ang isang tao o hindi. Pero dito po sa conversation na to, meron tayong dalawang bagay, napaka-importanting bagay na dapat matutunan and we should never we should not miss out on these things na dapat nating malaman na so, dalawang bagay this will be our assurance number one the hope for the kingdom of Christ so sabi dun sa binasa natin my kingdom is not of this world 
If my kingdom were of this world, my servant would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Sabi ni Christ, my kingdom is not of this world. Yes, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. Kasi kung, 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 siya, kung ito yung kingdom niya, then his disciples, no, ipaglalaban dapat siya. Hindi siya papayag na uh, ma, mahuli ng mga Jews o maaresto. Ano makikita natin dito sa verse na to? Or bakit ko nasabing a hope or the hope for the kingdom of Christ? Because in these verses, we, we can see that we must cling to a hope that whatever we experience in this world, there is a kingdom which will be our home forever. Whatever it is that, they, we, that we experience in this world, we can be assured that there is a kingdom that one day we will be, it will be our home. No, this, this world is our temporary home. It's, it is our temporary dwelling place. We belong to another kingdom. No, so, whatever chaos that you experience in this world, whatever injustice, Whatever sickness you experience personally, betrayal, ano pa, rejection, ngayon, pinagdadaanan natin, pandemic, whatever it is that we experience here on earth, we can be assured that there is a kingdom in which will, will be our forever home. Amen. Amen. So kung ano man kapatid yung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, have faith in Christ. We have this hope of a kingdom. Ano yung meron sa kingdom na yon? This is a kingdom of peace. Walang pag-aaway. Kingdom of righteousness. Kingdom of holiness. A corruption-free kingdom. A sin-free kingdom. A sorrow-free kingdom. Kingdom wherein we can experience the presence of God. A kingdom wherein we, we can commune with the Lord freely. A kingdom of righteousness, of holiness, without any darkness at all, without any sin at all. Amen. Pangalawang bagay, the hope for the truth. Kanina, kingdom, ngayon, truth in Christ. Katotohanan. Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am king. For this cause, I was born. And for this cause, I have come into the world. That I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Sabi doon, for this cause, for this reason, I was born. For this reason, I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. At ano po yung significance ito sa buhay natin? In this world full of lies, in, th- in this world where Satan is putting all the lies in our minds, we can be assured and we can come to Christ and know the truth. God provided us with the Bible wherein malalaman natin yung katotohanan patungkol sa Kanya. But this world has many na lies. Isa na dyan, false religion. May mga religion sinasabi, Christ is just a human. Yes, human siya. But He's also a God. But people are being deceived. Why? Because their religion doesn't encourage them to read their Bible. Let me tell you something. If your religion doesn't encourage you to read your Bible, if your religion doesn't invite you to read your Bible, then they are suppressing the truth from you. They are hiding the truth from you. Ano pa? Another lie. All religions are the same. No. Hindi po. All religions are the same. They all lead to one God. If all religions are the same, then Christ didn't have to come to earth and die on the cross. Pero sabi ng Lord, sabi ni Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
Christ didn't say, I'm one of the ways. Hindi. Hindi niya sinabi, I'm one of the ways. Meron namang ibang daan. No, sabi niya, I am the way. The only way. Amen? Another, another lie, the New Age movement or New Age spirituality. Hindi ito masyadong familiar sa, uh, sa Pilipinas but uh, meron tinatawag na New Age, spirit, New Age movement wherein pinaghalo ba naman yung science, more specific is yung physics and spirituality. Meron ng isang uh, nagsabi, nakalimutan ko na yung pangalan niya, mahirap tandaan kasi foreigner. So sabi niya, there is a seed of divinity inside every human. There is a seed of divinity daw that we can come to a point or level of consciousness wherein that divinity or that seed ay mag-grow. Na par- pwede na tayong maging parang Diyos. That we can actually do miracles. We can end racism. We can end uh, sickness. We can end hunger and war. Ang sabi doon sa New Age um, thinking na yon. Another, in the churches. Right now, merong lumalaganap. What is that? The prosperity gospel. There are churches that focuses more on prosperity, on wealth, or success. If that church preaches wealth more than they preach Christ, then think twice. Mag-isip-isip ka. If that church preach, cry, I preach wealth and prosperity more than they preach the cross and Christ, then think about it. Baka nasa maling church ka. May hindi po indication or hindi ebidensya ng pagiging Christian, ang kayamanan. Yes, God provides for us. God provides for our needs. Pero hindi po yun ang ebidensya ng pagiging isang kristyano. At lalong hindi po ibig sabihin na wala kang God's wisdom if you don't have a beautiful house, if you don't have a car. That is a lie. Lastly, new thought philosophy. Maybe hindi ito familiar sa inyo, yung term na new thought philosophy. But ito mas familiar, law of attraction. It's the same. Same lang po yun. Ano yung law of attraction? Sabi dito that somehow, if you think positively, no, it will turn into a positive energy and you will attract success and wealth. No, if you think positively, then it will turn into a positive energy that can attract success, can attract wealth or whatever it is that you want in life. At ang, ang problema po, luganak po ito sa Facebook. Nakita na ba kayo ng post na sabi, pag shinare mo to, magkakapera ka bukas. Kasi nungalingan po yun. But some of us are easily being uh, swayed or deceived by the enemy. Ano pong kailangan natin gawin? We must come to Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Our Lord Yeshua is the bearer of the truth. He is the truth. Amen. Balik na po tayo dun sa kwento. No? Dun sa kwento naman na dinala na si Christ na uh, again kay Pontius Pilate. So, at the feast po, bigyan ko kayo ng konting background. At the feast, may kapangyarihan ng governor na mag-release ng, uh, ng isang prisoner magpalaya ng isang uh, nakakulong. No? So, ang naisip ni Pontius Pilate, ayaw niyang ikulong si Jesus or ayaw niyang kasuhan or ayaw niyang patawan ng kamatayan si Kristo kasi nga nalaman niya inusente. So, ang ginawa niya, since meron siyang kapangyarihan na magpalaya ng isang tao, ang ginawa niya, pinapili niya yung mga tao. Pinapili niya between Jesus, an innocent man, and Barabbas, a murd, a, nor, a nurturous criminal, a murderer, a rebellious person. So, kung isipin po natin, easy choice. Innocent na tao, murderer. Sino papalayain mo? Of course, innocente. 
but we can see here the heart of man. So in a way, gusto ni Pilate na papiliin yung mga tao kung sino'y papakawalan para mawala yung guilt sa kanya eh. So at, at isa pa, sinabihan kasi siya ng asawa niya na wag. Na wag mong galawin dyan si, si Christ. No, but at the same time, he wanted to protect his position as a governor. So basahin po natin, Matthew 27, 21 to 26. 21. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with, with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Can you see the heart of man? Sabi niya, Let him be crucified. They don't even, they don't even answer the question of Pilate. Ni hindi nga sinagot yung tanong, Bakit ano yung, mas, ano yung evil na ginawa na to? Tuloy po natin. When Pilate saw that, the, that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Tanong ko sa'yo, have you ever been accused of something na hindi mo ginawa? Masakit yun, di ba? Masakit na ikaw yung napagalitan, ikaw yung naparusahan, kahit hindi mo naman siya ginawa. How much more si Christ? Jesus in experience injustice from these people. Nauna na dyan si Pilate. Kuya, bakit? Hinugasan niya yung kamay niya. Binigyan naman niya ng chance yung tao. Bakit ko sinabing injustice from Pilate? Because he was at the position na nasa position siya wherein he could have decided na inosente ito. Hindi natin ito pwedeng uh, parusahan. But he, he was able to, uh, he chose to protect his reputation. He, was, he chose to protect his position as a governor instead to do the right thing. He washed his hands but you know what? His hands were clean, but his conscience were filthy. Pangalawa, the high priest, the scribes, the people, people who were shouting, Cru- crucify him. Sabi nga nila, his blood be on us and our children. Idinamay pa yung mga anak. No? Ganito na lamang yung, yung puso ng mga taong to just to punish an innocent person to the point that he cursed, no, he put a curse, they put a curse into their children. They chose to free a sinful man at the cost of an impeccable and innocent person. Here we can see the human heart at the lowest condition. Dito po makikita natin the lowest state of a human heart. To even choose Barabbas instead of Jesus. Na mas pipiliin pa na palayain itong nakaka, uh, itong delikadong taong to, itong kriminal na to, mas pipiliin pa natin na palayain instead of Jesus. Can you see the corruption in the heart of man? Dito po sa, sa verses, sa passages na to, we can see the depravity. If we will look, of, if, or if we want to find an evidence of the depravity of man, then here it is, choosing Barabbas over Jesus. The filthiness, the darkness in the human heart, the idolatry, the greed, the envy in the human heart that will punish, that he will, that will kill, murder an innocent person for their own self-agenda. This is the worst demonstration of human heart. Tonight, mga kapatid, let's check our heart. Let's allow God to examine our hearts. 
And let us come to God and ask that He change our hearts. If let's, Let us pray that, Lord, if there's any pride in my heart, alisin mo po ito. Lord, if there's any greed, envy, corruption, greedy, greed, in my heart, alisin mo po ito. Lord, if there's any lust in my heart, if there's any injustice in my heart, alisin mo po ito. If there's any for unforgiveness in my heart right now, take it away, O God. Let's examine our hearts. Tanungin mo ang sarili mo. Is your heart hardened by sins? Is your heart corrupted by your ambitions? Right now, let's pray unto God. Let's ask for a new heart. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, here we are. Where we bow down before you. Lord, examine our hearts right now. Tingnan mo po ang puso ng bawat isa. Lord, if there's anything sa puso namin that does not please you, alisin mo po ito, Panginoon. Lord, change our hearts. Give us a new heart. Maybe our hearts have been hardened by sins. Maybe our hearts masyado nang tumigas ang puso namin. Masyado nang punong-puno ng, awang, ng, ng mga selfish ambitions namin. Maybe our hearts were, are so preoccupied by our own ambitions, by the lies of the enemies. Right now, God, give us a new heart. We want to come to you in repentance and change our hearts right now. Oh God, change us, oh God. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your love. Na kahit sobrang dumi ng puso namin, sobrang dumi namin, ay pinaglaban mo kami sa cross. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you po sa bawat isang nanood. Tomorrow will be the crucifixion. And I want every one of you to watch it.